I'm delighted to be here this morning to help introduce the report, which is both timely and constructive. I want to congratulate uh, the Royal Pharmaceutical Society for putting it together and reminding us of the contribution that the 54,000 registered pharmacists in the UK can make to policy. Something like 70% of all NHS spend is on long-term conditions and indeed 50% of GP appointments and there is a significant role for community pharmacists and GP based pharmacists uh, to play in helping take the pressure out of the system. I'm very excited by this report. I, I think again it's, it's, it's a moment in time which signals the type of competencies and skills a system of care needs without worrying about necessarily where that care is provided. It would make a lot of sense to me if we think about a way in which we can work with our community pharmacists much more effectively, not just around medicines management and medicines optimisation, but all the skills and resources that pharmacy teams can bring in terms of self-management and prevention, in terms of early detection, in terms of ongoing monitoring of long-term conditions, and in terms of medicines management in the end-of-life stages. It's the job of the RPS to make the case for change, to make the case for getting the best out of the pharmacy workforce and to make the case for new roles and responsibilities for pharmacists. We say that as it's so difficult for patients to see GPs, why not have prescribing pharmacists taking some of that workload, sharing with GPs, best for patients and take some of the pressure off the system. What the Royal Pharmaceutical Society has been trying to do in re envisaging what should be a multidisciplinary team environment in primary and community care is exemplary. As a prescriber, I'm able to sit with my patient in the clinic. I'm able to have a very detailed conversation with them about the different choices of medicines that are available to them. It's absolutely seamless um, and the patient isn't bound from the pharmacy to their GP into hospital and, and zigzagged across the health system. There is absolutely no question in my mind as we re-engineer primary care, much more around community, much more around the patient, much more around long-term conditions, uh, that the pharmacy profession has got a major role to play in that. We've got to stop just talking about it and get behind the programmes that are actually starting to demonstrate this uh, in, in a kind of powerful way. It's time to do things differently. I promise you now that we will be relentless in making the case for change but we will work with patient groups, other pharmacy bodies and other health professionals to ensure that the full potential of the pharmacy profession is finally realised. Thank you very much.